Thank you for this uh, opportunity to sit with you and to share with you an apology for spiritual harm. And I do this in the presence of the, the General Synod because apology commits us all to action. For a number of years since the Indigenous Coven of 1994, there has been a call for apology for spiritual abuse endured by Indigenous peoples through the era of colonial expansion and particularly through the era of the Indian residential schools. In his apology to survivors of the residential schools delivered on August the 6th, 1993, Archbishop Michael Pierce expressed his remorse on behalf of the Anglican Church of Canada, saying, and I quote, we try to remake you in our image. Tonight, I offer this apology of our cultural and spiritual arrogance toward all indigenous peoples, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis and the harm we inflicted on you. And I do this at the desire of many people in our church. I do it at the call of the Anglican Council of Indigenous People. And I do it at the request of and with the authority of the Council of the General Synod. I confess our sin in failing to acknowledge that as first peoples living here for thousands of years, you had a spiritual relationship with the Creator and with the land. We did not care enough to learn how your spirituality has always infused your governance, your social structures, and your family life. We did not care enough. I confess our sin in demonizing indigenous spiritualities and in belittling the traditional teachings of your grandmothers and grandfathers, preserved and passed on through the elders. I confess the sin of our arrogance in dismissing indigenous spiritualities and disciplines as incompatible with the gospel of Jesus and insisting that there was no place for them in Christian worship. I confess our sin in acts such as smothering the smudges, forbidding the pipes, stopping the drums, hiding the masks, destroying totem poles, silencing the songs, stilling the dances, and banning the potlatches. And with deep remorse on behalf of our church, I acknowledge the intergenerational trauma caused by our actions. I 
I confess our sin in declaring the teachings of the medicine wheel to be pagan and primitive. I confess our sin in robbing your children, in robbing your children and youth of the opportunity to know their spiritual ancestry, their indigenous spiritual ancestry, and the great wealth of its wisdom and guidance in living a good way with the Creator, the land, and all their relations. For such shameful behaviors, I am very sorry. We were so full of our own self-importance. To quote the Book of Common Prayer, we follow too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We were ignorant. And we were insensitive. And we offended you. And I believe we offended God. As we look to you today, we've come to acknowledge our need to repent. And as we look to God, again to quote the Book of Common Prayer, we say to the Creator, we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things we ought not to have done. We, the Indonesian elders of General Senate 2019, humbly receive the apology for spiritual harm containing the church commitment for spiritual healing. We commit to the conveying your grace, loving, thoughtful words to the Anglican Council of Indonesian people for the consideration and sharing with our communities. Let us say a first of all that we know the church understands that healing and forgiveness is so deeply personal and is usually a journey, a process, nothing, not a single act. We cannot speak for those who were spiritually harmed by the church approach to colonization. Each individual and each community across this vast land was hurt different experience and and is that different stage in healing process. But we, the elders of General Senate 2019, believe, believe that your words of apology will be support this healing process. We understand and respect in deeply meaning of this apology and the commitment and, and honor with which was made. Those of us who have had a pleasure to work with and to know your grace, appreciate it, appreciate beyond the word can convey it. That you have heard and understood us. We are touched to the depth of our soul by your words and commitment. We must clarify, however, that no single statement of accept, accept, accept is possible on behalf of indigenous people in this land. We respect, 
right for each individual and ponder to ponder your words and we hope that those who are at the stage of their healing to accept and forgive will do so in privacy of their homes and community. Trauma can easily to reunite by the simple cues in day-to-day -day life, anger, despair, hurts, and humiliation can easily reappear often without warning, even when we have embraced the forgiveness. But, but we sincerely hope that your word provide comfort and help convey God's grace and love to those who are affected by the spiritual harm and by the church, the role of creating this harm. For its part, we are sure that the Anglican Council of Indigenous Peoples will want to share this good news document that embraces what God created, that what God created us to be. The Indigenous Council can be a bridge in disseminating this document within our indigenous nations and sharing the love with which it was delivered. This is an historic week in the life of the future of our church. We did it together. We are partners in change. It was our finest moment as a church. As a fully recognized self-determining people, Within the Anglican Church of Canada, the apology is timely in reinforcing that the church is walking side by side with us as we continue our spiritual journey for healing. We now ask that the Council of General Synod and the House of Bishops continue in your commitment to our journey of spiritual renewal and to being champions of change. We need you to strengthen your partnership with our Indigenous Archbishop. We must move forward together to demonstrate that restoration of our spiritual practices to their rightful and proper place in the Church can only strengthen Anglican discipleship across Canada. We want to share a reflection now by Elder Grace Delaney on the personal depth and the meaning of your words of apology. First, I just wanted to crawl into bed and cry myself to sleep. I wanted to cry for those who have passed on, who have not had the opportunity to hear the primate's beautiful words of apology for spiritual harm. I wish that they had known that their pain was not in vain. Though they rest in peace and are in perpetual light, I can help, I can't help but rejoice for them too. There have been many, including indigenous people who have responded to the call to carry the word of the gospel of our creator and have worked hard to spread the gospel among our people. There are those among our people who, though Christian, completely reject their own values and systems of their traditional heritage. And there are those with courage who have stood and are standing up openly in the face of criticism and anger. They have be beheld the yearning of our Savior's heart, our previous primate Michael Pierce, our current primate Fred Hiltz, and many others across this temporary earthly home of ours defend their belief in justice and reconciliation. Across this land, many have felt remorse and even shame and have chosen to change the tides of the form, former norms of our church. Now our primate takes a step to reiterate in word the thoughts of hearts. An apology that can help build bridges and help us 
be the way our creator has intended for each of, a, of his diverse people. Each nation can now be true to the way creator God intended and fulfill their true destiny. They do not have to choose between their God and their culture. I feel such strength and release in the words of our primate's apology. It couldn't have come at a better time. Many of our people, young and old, have not found their identity and are caught in a chaotic state, not being able to figure out that the real me. I truly believe that if our creator made us different in color, in customs and cultures, then there really is a purpose and reason for each one of us, both diverse and collective, to see one another in the image of our triune creator. This is a moment to recognize that the courage that has been displayed in this apology has come from one greater and stronger and more powerful than our primate. There have been great orators throughout the history of humanity and we were given Fred Hiltz. In part of our gospel reading for July 7th, Luke 10, 17 to 21a, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Our Lord responds, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. It is in that same Holy Spirit that I thank you, your grace. Thank you for listening, all my relations. We thank you for your courage, for your eloquent apology, and for truly listening to the compassion of our Lord's heart to accept us as your brothers and your sisters with love. In our Creator's love and peace, we welcome your words of apology. Thank you. May our Creator God always be with us. Our bishop reiterated the apology to the central government of our nation. And there were several elders and young people present. And it was noticeable that the reaction was mixed. The, the nature of apology, that apology is one thing, but repentance from that apology is yet another piece of work. It takes action to be able to do that child. And, and that action uh, we felt needed uh, one more piece or one more apology. And that apology was for the damage done uh, not only 150 years ago in this country of Canada, uh, but also uh, 400 years of First Nations peoples on, uh, and Inuit and, and all of that, all across North America, Turtle Island, we call it. There is a sense that some weren't ready to accept the apology because of the extent of the damage, especially with our national artifacts like totem poles, regalia, headdresses, talking sticks, drums uh, that were destroyed. Uh, many elders passed down to the oncoming generations. How difficult that was. Because of what happened on Turtle Island, that's 400 years. So when you look at the colonization uh, uh, that has happened in, uh, on North, in North America, uh, plus the era of residential schools in Canada, 
uh, we felt an apology for spiritual harm was in order because Michael's apology, while it was excellent and moved us to where we needed to be, uh, the piece that was really missing was the fact that we were all still hurting from the damages done uh, through the removal of our language, culture, spirituality, because those things were seen to be evil, those things were seen to be, uh, if you practice those traditions, you would go to hell. That was the teaching of the church. So, it's understandable that some aren't written to accept the apology. An apology is a very, very big thing, and not only is the responsibility on the one who's apologizing, but it's also an, a responsibility on us who are receiving the apology, because, and I think we recognize that in our ASIP um, council, we've, we've begun to ask those questions and to say, where do we go and what do we do and how do we do it? Well, I think it was really meaningful, and I just wish more people got to hear it, and I think that's part of our job now, is to help get that apology out into our communities. The Primus Apology, to me, meant a lot, because when I think of my grandfather and my grandmother and my ancestors, and how they worked so hard for the church, and how things were, uh, they were told that this was wrong, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And that carried on through the to second and third generation. So now that the primate apologized, now it's to try to get our, our grandmothers and grandparents to, um, to realize that it wasn't wrong at all. To be able to become a self-determining church is uh, probably one of the dreams of many of my uh, uh, families, family members. I know Reverend Arthur A. Man would have been so proud because I know that uh, he was really involved uh, in the sacred circle. Um, it brought me joy and being able to to know that I that people recognize this now. The apology for spiritual harm lifted us from that. And I, that's what I felt, a freedom that I'd never felt before. That now we have, uh, as, as uh, we've said in this meeting of the Anglican Council of Indigenous People, uh, Archbishop Mark has told us now we have freedom and authority. We have the freedom to move ahead in, uh, uh, without worrying that's, that we're doing something wrong. Uh, and we have the authority through our Canon 22 and the movement toward a new self-determining church to make decisions on our behalf, led by Indigenous peoples. And those decisions we will make uh, as we come together in Sacred Circle, as we come together in uh, Anglican Council of Indigenous Meeting, which is Sacred Circle between Sacred Circles. Our Canon gives us structure that we can now move ahead in a home that we recognize as First Nations people. Um, I found it was so moving, eh? It was very emotional. And I kind of had the same reaction as, um, as other people said, like, um, about their parents. You know, like, if my mom had heard this, um, in, you know, when she was alive, I think it would have meant the world to her. That, to me, has uh, answered a prayer. It is... It is a meaning that we could do things and train our people, mentor, and bring bring the people into a big family. And being able to to say yes, somebody recognizes us, and there's some some tears that I had last night. Back in 1994, uh, we were brought into Winnipeg to respond to uh, the church's um, uh, request to look ahead. Uh, and uh, we met in Winnipeg, and the apology by our primate, then primate Michael, was given a year earlier in 1993. Uh, Michael's apology uh, was received by the elders uh, in a very good way, and Michael walked with us uh, gently uh, through sacred circles uh, and the years that followed uh, to 
uh, equip us, if you will, for uh, a journey of self de self determination within our church, which is what we've been looking for. And uh, the uh, the apology uh, gave momentum for us to continue that work. Uh, we appreciate it. The government certainly did appreciate it. that the church was willing to do that. I think in time, those that are not ready to accept it uh, eventually will. And it's for their own good to, uh, to learn to forgive. That's part of our teachings. Uh, we've had smudging in our church and they stopped that, but maybe this will help us to bring in more of our culture and traditions and a lot of our young youth need to learn about it so uh, when they come to church they'll be able to experience it firsthand and I'm just uh, I was just really proud that this came about. For our children we we can speak and to them and you know for my daughter and my grandson, I want something for them and, and not be lost as to who they are. See? I want them to know who they are and, and be proud of it too. When I think about ourselves as becoming like a self-determining independent church, um, it's, it's a huge task that is before us, I feel. And um, one of the things I think is that we're really powered by um, some very wonderful energy from so many of our people who are involved, our Indigenous people. And I also see, I, I'm really happy that we have young people um, that are involved as well. And the young people will be able to return to their homes energized and be able to bring those teachings back home and expand that to more young people. And the young people can uh, gently bring their elders on board to help them to understand what happened as a result of the apology for spiritual harm. To be able to bring in our traditions and our culture, I just really think that that's, that's uh, really important. I'm, I'm ecstatic and I just wish the elders were here to celebrate with this but I'm pretty sure they're probably rejoicing in heaven and uh, I'm looking forward on how we can work together to become a self-indigenous church. I just can't think where this has ever been done before and to me that is like really amazing, it is groundbreaking. Uh, our heart is in the right place. I think it's gonna be pretty amazing, so. All in time with God's grace. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And as we do that, we will see new life, a new birth, and the emerging church will have a spillover effect on the rest of the Anglican Church of Canada. We're doing it within the Anglican Church of Canada. So the, the apology moved me deeply, and uh, the, uh, the canon on 20, canon 22, we are moving forward in a very good and a positive way. So it excites me. Bring our traditions, bring our culture, everything back together again, the, the way it, it began with us. And, and so that we could um, be free to get our language back and be free to really live out the life that we are we that's meant for us yeah that's what i want Beautiful. yes Beautiful. yes amen amen <laughs>